Good morning, everyone, and welcome to webinar 12 in the Copware 2020 webinar series from Max Solutions. Today's webinar is on managing your OPC servers from the center. And here is the agenda. Initially, we'll look at what are the challenges of managing an OPC server. And then we'll look at the traditional way of configuring the Kepware OPC server, which is through the GUI. Then we'll look at the configuration API, which is an alternative way, uh, way of configuring the Kep server. And then we'll look at the configuration API and how it works, how the uh, configuration API interacts with Kep server for making the configuration and management easier. So who is this webinar designed for? It's aimed at people who are responsible for managing assets on the shop floor, such as PLCs, OPC servers, and SCADA systems, and also people who might be involved in compliance, especially for a larger, uh, larger company who might have standards across the entire estate of factories. It helps to, uh, to, to use a, a centralized tool in those situations and also anyone involved in planning for these types of projects for the future. So what are the challenges of configuring uh, an OPC server? If you were attended the webinar number two in the series, you will have seen this diagram before. And this is what I would term the diagram of everything. It shows all the different things that Kip server can do. And if you're building a Kip server configuration, you have the comms to the PLCs to configure, and then other devices as well, perhaps motion controllers as well. You'll have legacy systems, perhaps uh, OPC servers of, from a different uh, different source, and perhaps older OPC servers like OPC DA OPC servers. All of this will be communicating across a factory-wide network. And then you'll have the configuration of the KEP server itself, the different settings inside it, links to the SCADA, and you've got the configuration of the SCADA, the databases that you might be logging to, any .NET applications you've configured to communicate to, to KEP server, and then the higher level MES systems, the corporate systems, and that's all for one site. If you then multiply that by all the other sites that you've got, and then add in the links to the IoT clouds and web servers. There's a lot of configuration to manage there. So anything that we can do to help standardize that and help to make that as painless as possible is good. So that's the, the purpose of the configuration API, which we'll come on to later. So for those people who aren't familiar with the traditional configuration of Kip server, Normally, config, uh, configuration of Kip server is done through the local GUI. So you'll see on this image here, you'll have the connectivity, the channels, and the devices within those channels. And then you'll have all the plugins, like the alarms and events plugins, the data logger, IoT gateway, scheduler, historian, and all those other things. And all of this is done manually through a, a traditional Windows GUI. That requires you to have full manual access locally to the machine where you will be configuring this. Now that could be done through a remote desktop session, but most of the time it's done through a, a localized interface sitting at a keyboard and mouse. So an additional way to configure the, the server now is to use the configuration API. So what is the configuration API all about? The idea of it is that you can programmatically configure the KEP server from a third party application rather than sitting in front of the server and configuring it manually for each installation. And it's useful in various scenarios. The first one is the remote installation, and that is particularly pertinent at this particular moment where getting people to staff is, is nigh on impossible. So if you were to use the services of a, a customer's technician, you could do some basic settings in Kep server. You could then use the configuration API to link with that machine and remotely deploy or remotely modify your build of Kep server, 
without actually having to visit the site. All you need is an IP connection from where you are through to the customer's network or onto the customer's machine, and then you will be able to um, deploy without visiting site. The second scenario is useful where kept server is being used by machine builders. Some machine builders uh, embed the kept server product within their system and the customers don't really have visibility of it, all, of it at all. They don't know it exists, they just know the comms works. So there are certain scenarios where the technician at the customers where the machine has ended up will need to adjust some settings or can reconfigure or add a new machine or something of that nature. Um, if you were to build a custom app to inter interact with the configuration API and then use that, uh, the customer's technician could then use that app to do the limited functions that he needs to use without giving the engineer, the technician, full access to the GUI of Kip Server, which would risk uh, mistakes being made and such like. Also, if your code is actually locked down by a password, you need to uh, make sure that that's not compromised by having to give that password to the customer. The third scenario is standardization of OPC configurations across, especially useful for corporate customers. Um, if you have a large number of sites, if you happen to be a, say, a water company with 50, 60, 70, 100 sites, it's a good idea to have a standard template that is used across all the sites so that the naming conventions at each site are the same. So an engineer visiting from different sites can get a handle on what they're looking at without having to worry about a localized version of what they would normally see. And this goes on to the next uh, scenario where if you're deploying, deploying a large number of installations, then if you can programmatically build the KIP server and then deploy that remotely, you're getting the corporate template spread around uh, through, the, uh, through the different sites, and you're able to control the deployment of those, of those systems. You don't necessarily have to do something like an Acronis clone or, some, or a disk clone in order to, to get the same configuration. You could actually have a, a blank install of Kev Server and deploy it from the center and get a standardized build. This goes on to the version control aspects as well. As OPC configurations are perhaps manually change locally on the site, if something needs to be added or perhaps a modification needs to be made locally on a site, then if you're using the configuration API, you can also employ it to suck the configuration from the remote site back to the center. Therefore, you're doing centralized version control. So you know you have the configuration that's running actually on that site. So should you have some sort of failure, whether it be an accidental or malicious uh, situation, you could then do a centralized uh, deployment back to the site. So effectively, you could use the configuration API for doing a secure backup facility. So it has multiple, multiple strings to its bow. So just to recap, the big four are the custom configuration, standardization, programmatical build, and especially useful for remote installations. So how does the configuration API work? So as we looked at the GUI earlier, you'll have the configuration of the driver's side of Keb Server, which is the device side, which is the green uh, images to the bottom of the, of the screen here. And then above that, you'll have the interfaces. And then in the middle, you'll, you'll have the main server engine of Keb Server. And the configuration API taps into that main engine. So it provides a TCP IP connection through which you can make restful calls from a third party application. So there we have a local connection being made. So that's the sort of scenario where you'll have a Keb server inside a machine and you present the customer with a custom application through which they can interface locally, but they don't see the, the, the Kepware GUI. And then you would have a, 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 a remote client. Again, it would be using the same sort of application, but it would be connecting through a remote connection. So there will be a deployment from the center out to a remote site. Now, there are a number of resources that you can use to get further information 
Now, I'm not going to do a demonstration of it here. There are uh, there are pages that give the information about the code examples that you can use and some examples that you could start and adopt and adapt. There are two videos on YouTube showing the configuration API in action. Uh, there's a made easy guide where you, it talks you through how you would design and configure a configuration API application. And there's a number of FAQs as well. All of this is based upon the Kepware website. So today's webinar was all very much on a focused subject of the configuration API. So we looked at what are the challenges, what's the traditional way of configuring the Kep server, what is the configuration API, and how does it work? So many thanks for watching this webinar this morning. My name is Dave Hammond from Mac Solutions. I'm the product manager for the Kepware software in the UK. Uh, Mac Solutions, we've been the technical reseller for Kepware in the UK since 2001. And we also sell two other OPC titles. One is called the Cogent Data Hub from a Canadian company called Cogent. And one is called the OPC Router from a German company called Inray. And those were covered on webinar number 11. So many thanks for watching this webinar. And we hope you all stay safe and well. Thank you.